political right. I believe this is a great danger. The uh, contradictions that have emerged on this planet during the last 30 years have assumed a new quality. We need think only of what is happening in the Ukraine, in Syria, in the Middle East. So there's uh, the, uh, certain conflicts have assumed a highly violent character. And there is uh, the, the danger of a war, perhaps a war justified in ecological terms. So we need to be very aware of what is going on here. I want to say just two things. The first thing um, is that I f believe movements such as degrowth need to try to get uh, need to try to link up and pick up on the social question as much as possible social issues social movements movements that are addressing social issues need to be uh, brought into close contact with ecological movements. These movements need to work closely together and they need to address two questions. The question of the distribution of resources and the question of how wealth is controlled. It's not just a question of lifestyle. It's also a question of power. Who has the power? Who controls the resources in the world? In my opinion, it's very important to know what happens when Greens ask uh, questions that are typically attributed or associated with reds. Though, so when people from the ecological movements raise classic left-wing questions, they're immediately denounced as being left. Because being left is considered uh, an outlaw. It's considered... Uh, it's, co it's considered a danger and it's it's something that is the left positions are marginalized a, a person who radicalizes themselves starting from ecological issues um, and 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 at the same time is striving to uh, have a career at university may still have a chance of having a successful career as long as they only formulate a, a critique of growth but as soon as they begin to articulate uh, social problems or address social issues they're not likely to advance very far in the academic world so it's a question of addressing questions of power and questions of distribution of course um, it's it's not so subversive for us to formulate only a critique of growth, and that can be tolerated by uh, by the uh, uh, powers that be. But as soon as we begin to as address questions of of of, of power and and of distribution, that becomes a whole different story. So. S so there's always a temptation for people uh, from within the ecological movement to not identify too strongly with the left. Uh, and and I, I can understand that because in a way it's like an extra burden. Um, you're dealing with ecological issues and all of a sudden you have to address social issues as well and then you're accused of being uh, a red, accused of being on the left. but. Uh, there's no way around this issue. We have to address social issues. We have to get involved in these issues. And we can't get involved without addressing all of these problems. For this reason, I believe and this, that, that there is a, a danger in, uh, in, uh, in choosing degrowth as the heading for what we do. Because what we're doing is we're, we're declaring the question of growth um, to be the, the main question. But there isn't really a problem of growth. That's a mystification. What's really of concern to us and what's really causing problem for us are particular dynamics within the field of growth that concern the distribution of resources. But um, what about, say, care work? If, uh, if um, we have growth uh, in the care sector, something that's driving up um, the, the, the price of... Uh, 
when 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 we're dealing with 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 care care work being trans if when we look at care work being transferred from the private sphere um the household to the commercial sphere then on apparently we have an increase in costs but in fact nothing has increased there hasn't really been a growth in the costs at all it's simply that this work has tran been transferred from one area of society to another. So there's something very misleading about this talk of growth. In a way, it's a mystification and the lie that's distracting us from the question of distribution. That's the first point that I want to make. The second point goes a little further. What you're seeing on this graph is uh, the development of the profit rate and the rate of investments in the EU 15 countries during the past 15 years. So the purple curve um, shows you the share of profits in overall economic output during this period. As you can see, it's been on the rise. So if the share of profits in total output has been increasing, then the share of wages must have been decreasing. So there's been a redistribution of economic output in favor of profits and to the detriment of wages or, or waged workers. And this is problematic because, of course, this uh, amounts to an extension of the power in the power of large corporations. But then there's another aspect here. And, and this is that, and, and, and this is something that I think everyone should be aware of. In to look at the blue curve. During the same period, investment has decreased. So what what is this blue curve? Well, it refers or it depicts the part of economic output that's reinvested in economic output. So the building of a new factory, um, the opening of a school, something of that kind. This um, has been on the decrease. And this, this is also this is a basic tendency that we find on the global level as well. It's easy to understand. The reason is that when it comes to producing material goods, uh, chairs, cars, and computers, and so on, w we have rationalized these production processes. So we need fewer resources and less time, because time, labor time, of course, is the main, the most important resource. And this, and this, the, the same is true uh, of, for example, computer uh, programming and and. Uh, uh, you, you can you can now do your bookkeeping mu in much less time than used to be the case, um, thanks to the new software that we have. So we have in incredible increases in productivity, and a capitalist society where investment occurs when there is the prospect of n new profits, um, the willingness to invest is decisive, but we are now so rational, we are producing so rationally, or uh, in many f areas, uh, such as in the automobile, automobile industry that in fact investment is no longer interesting there's talk in the automobile industry of taking back certain uh, rationalization measures what this means is that part of the wealth that is not being invested well where is it going it's going on to the financial market and then you have um, all of these financial products that create these sorts of castles in the air where for a time you can still create uh, revenue, but it all becomes more and more abstract and more and more fragile, and it's uh, and basically you have the emergence of financial bubbles that burst sooner or later. So you have a part of the wealth that is being produced that is no longer being put to use properly. It's being reallocated to the financial markets, and the right thing to do, of course, would be to use this wealth to bring about a reduction in labor time and uh, the transition to a more ecologically sound society. We could use uh, these this wealth uh, uh, for these uh, purposes, but we would have to redistribute it first. The, the wealth should be used to help people um, uh, find a way to, to lead the lives that they want to live uh, and, and to and, and so it seems to me that the whole question of distribution is not just about justice. It's also a question of what you might call social intelligence. If we don't get this wealth, if we don't take it back from the financial markets and redistribute it, then we're going to walk from one crisis into the next. 
because this wealth is no longer being invested in a sensible way. It's no longer being reinvested in our societies in a, in a sensible way. It's simply bloating the financial markets. And that's why it's so important for green movements and red movements to come together and to confront this challenge. And all of us need to confront ourselves with the question uh, um, of the, with the questions that are raised by the left, and we need to confront ourselves with with uh, the left wing issues. Thank you, Bent, for this um, 